Here's one of the most annoying things about my OBS truck. This. This truck is a 1995 GMC Suburban. And for any of you who drive a 95, even on up to 2000 GM or Chevrolet truck, I'm sure this climate control panel looks very familiar to you. So let me show you what's going on. As soon as I jump in the truck and put my key in the ignition, I'll then turn the key to the on position. And more often than not, right away we'll get this. It's a problem where the switch is kicking the compressor on and kicking my electric fans on. Now, obviously with the switch on, everything turns on and works as usual, but it's when it's in this off position that I get the malfunction. Now I have electric fans in this truck and every time this switch decides to turn itself on and off, those electric fans kick on as well as the air conditioning compressor. Not ideal. This happens at complete random anytime the system is in the off position and the ignition is on. My task today, should I choose to accept, is to find out what in the world is going on with that switch. And I do accept the task. Okay, so the first order of business is to remove this trim panel, this front instrument bezel, which is fairly easy to do. It's also easy to shift all the way down into first to get the shift lever out of the way and pull this baby off. But in order to completely remove this front bezel, we do have a few switches we need to take care of. There goes that one. And with these last two switches disconnected from the back, we can then attempt to pull this thing out without breaking it. And there we go. And with that bezel out of the way, we can work on removing this climate control panel. To remove this, there's simply a clip on each side. I'm gonna stick a small screwdriver in one side and attempt to, there we go. And I'll do the same for this side. There we go. Now that both clips are removed, we can pull it out. Here we are at the bench and I have the climate control panel here and this is the switch we're gonna be looking at. So if we turn it around, we can see that it's held in with one five and a half millimeter screw. And once we get this out of the way, we now have access to the back of this switch. I'm also gonna pull this front knob off, just like that. And then with a little effort and a screwdriver, we can get this switch out of there. Now, if we look closely at this switch, we can see there are a couple locking tabs in here. I already got this one, which has a little indent there to move. So we're gonna see if we can just somewhat slowly pry this apart. This little piece right here doesn't seem like a clip. It just seems like a, a locator tab, but we do have a clip right here. We got it out, guys. I'm willing to bet that all we have to do is clean up the contacts on this piece here to fix this whole thing. So the problem with this is obviously dirty contacts. It's a very simple part. You can see there's a copper nipple there and there and a couple separated contact points. I think all we have to do is clean this up, maybe give it an 800 grit sand and put it back together. I'm gonna start with wiping off the grease and I'll wipe off the grease on this side. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take a piece of 800 grit sandpaper and just ever so slightly sand down the contact points. We just wanna make sure that they are clean and clear of any debris. Okay, and here is my after. You can see I didn't go crazy on those contact points, just wanted to clean them up a little bit. I think I'll attempt the same thing on this piece, not pressing too hard, just enough to feel it. And there is the after on this part. And now that these are both cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and put some dielectric grease, which I have right here. And we'll liberally apply this grease to everything in here. And hopefully we won't have this problem again. Now, when I put this thing back together, you can see there's an indent there, and that's where this nipple is going to go. So this is going to go something like that. Now, the way we know how to put this thing back together is because that locating tab that goes right there and is right there. So let's go ahead and slide these two back together, making sure that our switch is in the correct location. Perfect. Everything is back together the way it should be. We can test this switch out. So now we can take this switch and put it back into the control panel here. And that is back in place. We can, of course, put our knob back on. Everything seems to be functioning perfectly normally. We can also put this final piece back on. Perfect. Before I put this entire thing back together, I'm first gonna plug this in to check that everything works properly. 
These electrical contacts only go in one way, so you can't mix it up. Now I'll go ahead and put the key into the run position and we'll check to see if everything is functioning properly. So right now I'm not seeing any sort of malfunctions, which is good. We'll mess with the switch. Awesome, I don't see any sort of malfunctions going on at all. This is exactly where those malfunctions would have been. So we'll put it into number one. You can hear the fans are all kicked on. My actual electric fans are on under the hood and I heard the compressor kick in. There's medium, medium high, and high. So everything is working exactly as it should and we also have the entire system off and not being switched back on and I'm messing with it here just to verify that. So this is a good fix guys. We fixed it. Just by taking this apart, taking some time, we have completely fixed this malfunctioning air conditioning control unit, which normally would cost, I believe, over $150 to replace. So this cost me absolutely nothing to do but some of my time, and here I am making a video about it to show and help you guys. Let's put this all back together. I think we're all back together. Every clip is attached. Back in park. Can raise my steering wheel back up. Everything is now back together, so let's test it out one last time. Turning the key to the on position, we now have power to our control panel here. And I'll go ahead and mess with it and see if we can get it to falsely turn on. And it's not kicking on, which is awesome. We'll now kick it into low. You can see there it's kicked on. Medium, medium high, and high. Everything is functioning and working properly. When it's off, it's off. I love it. This is something that's been annoying me for so long and I didn't know how to fix it. And today I told myself, you know what? We're just gonna get in there, take it apart and see what we can do. And that's what we did. I took it apart, cleaned it up, relubed it and it cost me nothing. And now it works and functions like it was new. So this particular climate control panel is actually new-ish. I bought it a few years ago when the original started to fail. I bought it on Amazon. And if you're interested, I'll put a link down in the description below this video. However, after a short period of time of owning it, it also started to malfunction. Due to the price, of course, I didn't want to just go out and buy a new one, so I chose to just live with it. And that is, of course, until today, when I decided to take matters into my own hand, save myself a boatload of money, and fix it myself. And just like with most monsters, they're never as big as you think they are. I was able to take this thing apart, find out that it was a very simple fix. Lubed it up, put it back together, and it is working perfectly. Who doesn't love to save money? I have an incredible feeling of accomplishment and I love that. Well guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up and also subscribe if you're not already. I'm Jimmy, this is One Road, and I will see you in the next one.